Um, so the show's called Between Here and There is Better Than Any Other Here or There. And I think actually most of the work is a pretty direct response to the residency I did in Iceland last year um, in Reykjavik. And um, I always say that I went there expressly not to paint pictures of this unusual landscape that I was going to see, just to use the time to chill out and sort of refocus some ideas and think of some new stuff. And then I think I'd been there for about 24 hours before I was drawing rocks and all sorts of natural phenomena, which I hadn't really done. All my work before that had been more interior focused and object focused and um, yeah, sort of was really the last thing I expected to do, be making landscape works. And um, yeah, it just, just totally blew me away. So I've always been interested in magic and I guess like all things metaphysical and um, when I got there, it just seemed like the perfect place because it was filled with, yeah, these really quirky natural wonders that if there was a place in the world where you were going to believe in magic, then this was the place. So um, rainbows in the sky every day and rings of mushrooms and solitary giant boulders set against, you know, giant um, blue, beautiful skies. And yeah, really, really took me by surprise. So. When I came back, I just started playing with all those imagery, all the imagery of all the things I'd seen, all the working from thousands of photographs that I took when I was over there and a bunch of sketches that I'd done. And I just started thinking about what would happen if you collaged all these icons of, of spirituality or all these awe-inspiring landscapes into one sort of meshed puzzle piece and you know what would be the outcome and maybe there was some way I could find some I don't know answers or something if I started chucking all these things together so that's what I've been doing and um, yeah it's really uh, I think looking at it in this sort of more experimental way and letting the works evolve a bit more instead of thinking, oh, I'm kind of interested in this area of magic and I'll make a picture about that references tarot cards or, or something like that. And it's really let me um, enjoy the painting experience a lot more. And when After going on that trip, I sort of came back with a lot more confidence than I'd had before. I sort of trusted, after speaking to other artists that I met there and I don't know, something, something just clicked and I just sort of came into my stride a little bit and felt... Um, that I didn't need to be spelling everything out and explaining everything to like myself, but also to the viewer. And so, yeah, trusting my intuition a bit more. And I think for this show, I just sort of started out making a series of small paintings. I knew they were gonna be based on this imagery that I'd seen and based on this idea of kind of throwing these, I don't know, psychically charged places together and seeing what happened. And that was it, and I just let them evolve, and it was amazing. The, the results were really, was a big progressive step for me, so. Mm. And a much more enjoyable way to make the work. There were surprises happening while I was making it, instead of it being, yeah, like making plans and executing them to the finest detail. Well, I've always been interested in um, pareidolia, which is when you see shapes in the clouds that look like whatever or um, you know the rabbit in the moon and stuff and so I think I've always let those kind of um, unexplained formations happen in my um, in the sort of blurry aspects of my work but I never really let them happen in the detailed areas and um, by sort of grabbing little pieces of imagery from my my travels um, and piecing them together in a sort of nonsensical way it let some of that same stuff that happens in the blurry ad abstract aspects of my, my work come through in the more figurative parts. Well, I think for a long time I was really interested in all this sort of fringe pseudoscience stuff and I was really researching why do we believe in it, what's the psychology of it and, and did these works that were really, I sort of researched it to death and it lost all its magic and, and interest for me and when I sort of came in contact with these really amazing um, geological places, it was like, oh, that's it. It doesn't need to be explained and it doesn't need to 
um, have a direct line to Madame whoever from the 17th century. You know, it just all sort of fell into place and seemed much more natural. And so, yeah, I mean, looking at the work, the body of work, I guess it makes me feel excited about the new, new works that I'm going to make as well. And um, I definitely feel a bit freer in my subject matter. And so, you know, I'm excited about what might come next from exploring this in a different way. And did that experience also inform the materials that you use because of the, the connection with nature and this, this magical understanding and awareness of just things that surround you every day? Um, well, I think um, maybe it made, made me able to describe some of the materiality I've been using a, a bit better. So. Um, doing those big sort of abstract spills and letting the, the paint kind of do its own thing that um, was beyond my sort of fairly tight style in other areas. Um, that sort of, I don't know, within that landscape context, it seemed to make a bit more sense than, uh, seemed to be easier to describe than it had been before. So, um, but yeah. I don't know, my work's a lot more colourful after being there, which is nice, so. Um, there were literally rainbows every day, and you know, painting rainbows, I never thought I'd be painting rainbows. <laughs> yeah, so, and one of the biggest works in the show is a giant rainbow in it, so. I think um, trusting myself a little bit more to, to be able to put things together in a sort of, some kind of dialogue, um, and that's probably what I mean when I say collaging the works together. So, um, like using the water slides in some of the work, and that was, they were part of the imagery that was around when I was there a lot. And then when I started thinking about them, you know, maybe things like water slides and theme parks are replacement for this um, spiritual thing that we don't really have access to anymore. And so, um, yeah, try, trying to make some kind of conversation within them, but playing is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs>